Hey, what's up guys? We're in Atlanta, Georgia, and today we're playing with triggers. Hey guys, and welcome back. Today we're playing with triggers so you can understand how they integrate with flare and why they're important for motion control. We've learned that motion control rigs can make camera movements perfectly repeatable, but what do you do about the other components in your shots? That's where triggering comes in. We can break triggers down into two main categories, input and output. Input triggers allow us to use external systems or commands to trigger flare. I actually used one at my own wedding for a Glambot setup. The app that I made was able to trigger flare to start using OSC, which is a common networking protocol. There are a few other ways to trigger flare, such as using an IR trip light so that once the beam is broken, the robot shoots, kind of like the garage door sensors that you have to jump over when you're closing the garage, or you can synchronize the moves to time code, which is incredibly useful, especially in situations such as music videos. Output triggers do the opposite. They allow you to start and stop external systems at the exact time and frame that you specify on your timeline in Flare. There are many types of output triggers, such as lights, explosions, solenoids, etc., and they can all be triggered at whatever frame or interval you specify, such as cyclic if you want a light to be constantly flashing, or if you want to create audio cues for your talent to move to. Output triggers are commonly used with special effects equipment, and they give you a lot more control over the entire set. After I got home, I was reminded of quite possibly one of the most brilliant examples of triggering and timing and the precision that you can achieve with motion control robotics. Let me show you what I mean. Flare will be managing everything. Timing can be incredibly important, especially when dealing with a bunch of systems, and triggering enables you to ensure that the action happens when you want it to, in frame for maximum visual impact. <laughs> Flare also has the ability to send triggers over a network to control external systems such as playback of content on LED walls, sequences in Unreal Engine, or lighting cues. If you just need to trigger something at the start of the move, you can do this by going to Run, Trigger Lighting Desk, and filling out the dialog box with the info that you need. If you want to trigger them with keyframes on your timeline, it can be a bit of an additional setup, uh, but don't let that scare you. Essentially, you just need to set up a virtual axis in Flare, and then you can use something like Touch Designer to send commands to external systems based on the keyframes that you set for that virtual axis. This is a bit more of an advanced workflow, but you do have that as an option. I've included a free download in the description below for a touch designer project file, so feel free to grab that and poke around if you want to learn more. Well, that's it for this episode, guys. Thanks again for tuning in to MRMC Academy. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and feel free to leave any questions down in the comments below, or hit me up on Instagram if you'd like to connect. Until next time, peace.